uh, been in uh, Psalm 32, um, uh, so we are going to dispense with a review um, for this week. That does not mean that you'll be off the hook for next week, um, but uh, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Um, <laughs> the um, Psalms 33 um, is a... An interesting psalm in that probably one of the more famous verses that people like to use to refer to the United States is found in this chapter. Um, uh, uh, verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Um, sure. <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know, if, 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 if you believe that America is still a Christian nation, I guess that's a uh, possibility. Um, by by majority and by and large, I don't th feel like we're there anymore. I think we're a little spoiled here in the South and specifically Middle Tennessee, where there's a church on every doorstep. And um, even if it's not the a Baptist or correct kind of church or something, but it's something that tells you something about what they think. <laughs> uh, Christ is, you know, it, it, something of that nature. Everybody's heard of Jesus. You you, you can't find you can't find a sinner with radar, um, you know. It, and 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 I think we're, uh, but that's not that's not the norm for the entirety of the country. That's that that is a that is a very localized thing that we are very privileged to uh, to uh, enjoy. But Psalm chapter thirty three is a. Um, is a call to rejoicing for the things that the Lord is able to do. The first verse of Psalm, uh, uh, Psalm 33 is, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with the harp, singing unto him with the, with the psaltery, and, and, and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. This is kind of the um, the introduction, the the preamble, the 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 the, the summation of what the the chapter's focus is. It is it is instructing God's people, as we have through you know the the previous thirty two psalms that we've looked at, to praise the Lord, but for a very specific thing. Verse four gives us what why that we should be praising him um for the word of the lord is right and all his works are done in truth um because he is what he is because he is righteous because he is truth because he is justice because he is holy he deserve deserves all the praise and, and it, it says the, the word of the lord which i mean it, you know that we have a a a nice sampling of that right here in our very hands, and, and some of you before you on, on, on the table there, and then the works, everything that he sets his hand about to is truth. It, it, is, it is correct. It is, it is and, and I, I, so in some ways, I cannot fathom the things that God allows being correct. In, in, in my human summation... A better way to handle humanity was just to make everybody worship God. Why, why can't we all just be on the same page? Why, why, why can't we all be servant? Be because that's not how He designed it. And, and and that thought is a finite thought. But His ways are higher than our ways. And 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 and, and the way that He brings glory and if you, previous three verses and praise to Himself is by making these complex and and higher thought decisions about he gets just as much praise out of the hardening of Pharaoh's heart as he does by letting the people go. Right. We, we read the, the ten plagues of Egypt, which Brother Larry touched on in his sermon uh, on Wednesday night. We read, we read the, uh, the, these plagues of Egypt, we think, well, this, this is sort of God sort of like hammering away at Pharaoh until he finally, uh, and finally, finally lets him go. No, this is a display of the power of God on unrighteous people. And God is just as pleased when he hammers away at a lost person, a, a person that is spiritually incapable of accepting, 
uh, 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 God as the Holy One and accepting God as the ultimate authority. He gets just as much praise out of punishing them and hurting them and, and displaying His power onto them, not through them, onto them, as he does by letting Moses walk into walk up to the edge of the Red Sea and, and, and use his staff to part it. He gets just as much praise from both. And that doesn't factor into our human way of thinking because we're very selfish creatures. We think that everything has to go our way or be perfectly our way for things to... Um, uh, to, for things to be great for us, uh, but that's not that. Again, we're talking about a higher consciousness, a higher uh, a, a a higher way of thinking. Uh, he loveth the righteous and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breadth of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth in the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the, world, of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Now, it jumps off of verse 4 where he talks about the works of the Lord and immediately starts making allusions to creation. It says, uh, he, uh, he, the, he, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. He says, first of all, there are two things that our Lord enjoys. He enjoys upright and holy people. He likes those things. And he likes judgment. He is pleased with, as the ultimate authority on everything, he is pleased with the judgment calls he made. A lot of people like to uh, uh, compliment me or whatever on on the on the on the live stream ministry, and and and, and those compliments are, are are taken well enough. Uh, you should definitely praise the Lord that we that we have the ability to do those things. But but this is the thing. A lot of times I'll say, well, it's not doing what I want it to do. Nobody in this room understands that stuff the way I do, and I can pass judgment on those systems because I know what they're failing to do. We are incapable of passing judgment on other people correctly. We're not an authority. Because we are, you know, and, and actually it's going to talk about uh, the, uh, the, the same type of, the same type, of, we're going to see some more stuff about this later in the chapter. But uh, Brother Junior is made out of the exact same stuff that I'm made out of. The, 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 uh, the, his besetting sins might be different, but the thoughts and the intents of his heart are the exact same as mine. And therefore, I have no place, no place of righteousness from which to uphold myself and pass judgment upon him. And I think that's one of the things at the, uh, at the, um, uh, with, with the uh, woman caught in adultery that the Lord was wanting to point out. It's like nobody here has the ability to call her on her, on her sin because you're all sinners too. The, and, and the ultimate righteous judge that had the ability to do that was there. Now, this is, the, this is a distinction that we, we like to make, though. This is our own head knowledge, our own head canon, if you will. We like to believe that we can pass judgment because we're saved or because we are religiously superior to other people. We have correct doctrine. Therefore, I'm able to lord that correct doctrine over Brother Ken. Nothing could farther, be farther from the truth. Jesus, you know, Jesus tells us a lot about um, identifying people. And I, I do believe that we have the ability to identify. Spiritual discernment is a gift of God. Make no mistake, that's not coming from you. If you have the ability to spiritually discern people, that is an attunement with the Lord that you are using to your betterment, and you better be thankful that you have it. Um, but I can walk... I, I know nothing about fruit trees, or, or very little. I understand how trees work, but I, I don't, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm not proficient in the caretaking of fruit trees. But I can walk up to a fruit orchard, and let's say there's, a, there's an orange tree and an apple tree side by side, and I can easily identify either tree from one another. How do I do that? Well, I walk up to the apple tree and I look at the apple and say, you know, there's an apple. And I can almost say without certain, based on my very finite and limited knowledge about fruit trees, that that's probably not a pear tree. That's probably not a grapevine. That's probably an apple tree because apples are on it. By, by, the, by their fruits, you shall know them. I can also walk over to the orange tree and say, you know what, this one it's kind of similar to the apple tree, but it's not an apple tree. And how do I know that? Because it's got oranges on it. 
And this seems very simplistic thinking, but that's called discernment. There's no judgment made there. But the owner of that fruit orchard can walk out, the man who whose livelihood it is to caretake trees and say, that's a bad apple tree. And I can say, why do you say that? And he can show me why it's a bad apple tree. He can pass judgment. So there's a difference between discernment and judgment. And God specifically, because of who he is, because he is the, the tender of the apple orchard, he is the creator of it, he is the, he, is the, he is the foundation of every brick that has been laid of this universe, he can look at, uh, at, at Brother Jared and say, this apple tree is as I see it. I can pass judgment on it. And that's one of the things he loves to do. But then you got a coal in there. And it says, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Now, this word goodness, if you look it up in Strong's, can also be mercy. So in spite of the fact that he only likes righteousness and has the authority to judge this universe, there is unfathomable goodness and mercy that flows throughout the entirety of the landscape we see. Uh, they're, 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 all we survey the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink is a mercy that's not just given to... God didn't just say, okay, well, these are the saved people, so they get water. No, it's, it's, it, on the, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. There, are, there is goodness and mercy throughout creation that is offered to everybody because on top of being a God that enjoys righteousness and enjoys judgment, He is also a very merciful, kind, and loving God. And He can be all those things at once. And then he goes on and talks about how the heavens were made. The, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them and the, by, by the breath of his mouth. It just, just the speaking of the words. It talks about the, the waters in verse 7. Uh, and then in verse 8, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. We should be staggered by the things we see. And I think to a certain degree we are. The ancients were, in, were amazed by the wonders of nature, nature that they found. But instead of looking and saying, there must be a God. No, they said, that must be God. Um, uh, it, but even, even pagans, even heathens can look on the majesty of what God carved out with his own words and say, that's, that's awesome. That's something that's full of awe. I, I, I stand amazed in the presence of, of, of what God's handiwork has, has, has wrought. And Psalms calls us to look at all these things, look at the, look at the mercy and, 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 and look at the beauty that surrounds all of us around you. I mean, look at the United States. From, from coast to coast, north to south, uh, east to west, there is such a variety, and, and, and of course we got all these other. You know, we got we got our we got our holdings out in the Medi uh, in, in the Caribbean. We've got Alaska up there uh, uh, above Canada, and we got the Hawaiian Islands. And, and, and there's such a diversity just in the United States alone. You could travel the length and breadth of the United States, and, and everywhere that you go, you would see something that is more beautiful and more just in nature that you could stand in awe of. And that's just in the finite realm, the imaginary borders that man has set up that creates the United States. And the rest of the world is even more full of more beautiful things. For he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Now, he said, he spake and it was done, he commanded and stood fast. And then he wants to make a contrast here in verse 10. It says, the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the, the devices of the people to no effect. You know, there's a lot of counsel out there today from this heathen world. Counsel like th that has created things like Pride Month. Uh, counsel that has, that has created things that, uh, uh, like uh, 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 socialism and communism. Uh, uh, the, the, these, these things that, 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 that appear on the face of them to be accepting and, 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 so, and so right and, 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 and loving and everything. And, and ultimately, all this stuff will fall apart. You know, you, you know where there's the most sexually transmitted diseases and which community that can be found? 
your, 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 your fun-loving homosexual community, that's where it's found, right there. Why? Because God takes the counsel of heathen. Where, hey, it's okay for you to love and, and have intercourse with another man. He takes that counsel and he twists it. Because sin will find you out and say, well, how do you know it's sin? Well, God placed one man and one woman in the garden. He, I've heard it said before, and it's a little crass, it may be, but he created Adam and Eve. He did not create Adam and Steve. He, he, he made, and to, be, and to be perfectly honest, I mean, there, there are even worse and more horrible counsels out there that said, well, Adam should have just been happy with the animals. Well, even that is not acceptable in God's Word because Adam looked through all of creation and could not find someone like him. So God created woman. And those counsels, the, the things that the, that, that, that the world says, oh, this is all right. It's okay to, to live it as long as you're not hurting anyone else. That, that's basically where we're at. You can do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting other people or you have consent. That, 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 that's the counsel of the world. Whereas God's word, it says, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. If you want to know a, a little bit more about the word, the counsel of the Lord standing per, forever, I would encourage you to tune in on Tuesday night or go to our YouTube channel and watch 15 episodes of why the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. This has not changed. When a whirlwind of governments and people and, 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 and movements and, and, and reformations and, and, and enlightenment periods have, have risen and fallen, one council has stood the test of time. One council has, ha, ha, has offered insight that a lot of your scientists and other people have come around and said, you know what, actually, that's, that's, a, that's true. Why, were, why, did nobody, why, why did nothing but three ships head out for the West Indies with Christopher Columbus? Well, most people thought they were going to fall off the edge. But our Bible said thousands of years before anybody had a satellite photo of it or anything else that it is a sphere that hangeth on nothing. Right there. The counsel of our Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. I still think that this is, I think any promise that you find in the Word of God stands true. Did you know that this word nation, if you look up the Hebrew word for it, actually means a Gentile nation? It specifically means a Gentile nation, which is why this verse is applicable to stories like Jonah, where the Ninevites, you know the Assyrians were a terrible people, bloodthirsty, violent. I think I've described what they would do to people just for the fun of it. But there was even redemption for the Ninevites. Now, I think at one point, this verse was very applicable to the United States. Specifically in the 40s and 50s and 60s and the prosperity that followed World War II and our, and our ability to basically not run up against any defeat throughout the World War, well, I think was directly predicated on two different things. First of all, uh, we left behind the decadence of the 1920s where we just did whatever we wanted, the roaring 20s. Because we'd just come through a depression where people were finally, uh, I don't, I, yeah, here it is, God got a hold of us in the way that only most Americans know how to, and it's through that right there. <laughs> the depression turned a lot of hearts and minds back toward God because when you ain't got nothing to eat and you ain't got no way of getting anything to eat, you'll start getting on your knees and praying to God just, ju just like the children of Israel did when they had that drought. And so we were spiritually prepared when, our, when Pearl Harbor got bombed for a godly nation to go to war in defense of God's chosen people. And we reaped benefits from it. The prosperity, you know, you know the American dream is literally built upon the things that we gained after World War II, the 50s and the 60s and maybe a little bit of the 70s. That, uh, you know, three-bedroom house, brick, two cars in the driveway, all of that is built upon that time period. 
It's also, though, built upon the prosperity, the blessing that God gives His people, those that He's chosen. Not only does it say, blessed is the nation whose God is Lord, the people whom He hath chosen for His inheritance. We were a tool for a time, and I don't think that time is now. Why are we having so much economic trouble? Because there is not enough Christians left in this country to fan that flame anymore. And, I, and, 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 and some of that's our fault. We don't flam, fan the flame hard enough. But if we were all doing everything that we could do, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's like Lot living in so- Sodom. Brothers and sisters, do not so wickedly. And they just laugh him off. Can America be a Christian nation again? Of course. If the Assyrians can find redemption, I promise you the people of the United States can find redemption. But when there, there's a, there, it seems like people like to use this verse as just a blanket thing for the United States, and, and we're not there anymore. We're not there anymore. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men from the place of his inha- inhabitation, from the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by, uh, saved by the multitude of his host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon him, them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Now, we shift away from this chosen people and we look at the Lord again and his position of viewing. I said he's the ultimate judge. Why? Because he's higher than everything. And I think these preceding verses after verse 12 kind of show us God's perspective. He looks down, he can see everything and everybody. And to be a good judge, he needs to be able to do that. A lot of people say, well, he doesn't know the... uh, He knows everything. Nothing escapes our God's eye. He knew Pharaoh. And I don't think Pharaoh was a saved man. But when it comes to the day when all the dead are resurrected and they all stand before his white throne of judgment, he will be able to flop open his book, show them exactly how they lived their life, and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Let's go back to our apple orchard thing. A, a, a man that, knows a good, that has a good fruit orchard must be aware of everything going on in that orchard. And if a blight shows up in a tree, he must pass judgment on that tree. And that thing needs to be took down. Why? Because it will infect the rest of them. And our Lord God, he looks, on, he looks on the bad trees and the good trees and, and all of it alike. I think there's a, uh, in, in the New Testament there's a parable a lot like this. Remember the, 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 the tares that came up with the wheat? And they said, well, we, should we pull up the, 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 the tares? And the, he said, no, servants, don't pull up the tares. We're going to wait till harvest time. Because if you pull up the tares now, you're going to, te- you're going to destroy the wheat that's growing out there with them. But when, 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 we, when we get back to it, but the eye... Ne- there was never any doubt, though, and, and this is, I think this is where people lose it a lot of time, especially when we talk talking about election and whose chosen people are and whatnot. There was never any doubt, though, on who was tares and who was wheat. Identifying them was very easy. It says, He fashioned their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. This is kind of alluding to what I was talking about. Me and Brother Junior are made of the same thing. You know what? Me and Ken are made of the same stuff. Me and Abigail are made of the same stuff. And me and Brother Jared are made of the same stuff. We're all made out of flesh. And our our particular besetting sin, our vices, may differ from person to person. But sin is sin at the end of the day. God God doesn't see uh, sin in levels of categories. He sees sin in one giant category of black. You're a liar, you're a sinner. In the barbershop, I actually see a lot of um, 
lying's almost glorified in a sense in a barbershop. It's like in the first person a barbershop, uh, uh, the last person a barbershop doesn't stand a chance on telling lies because there's already been so many told before him. And and that's the kind of attitude that is treated in a lot of in, in, in a lot of local settings. And nothing's meant by it. But liar, lying is a sin. Little white lies, you know, stretching the truth, you know, telling about how big your bass was. It goes from here to here. It's all sin. And God doesn't see that any different from, you know, uh, uh, some Joe Blow down the road cheating on his wife with somebody else. It's, it's the exact same thing. Your, your condemnation is your condemnation. Um, and then he goes on and says, there is, no, uh, there is another playing field that we're all on that nobody, from the highest king to the mightiest man to the one with the greatest tools... A horse is a vain thing. Is able to deliver themselves by our own strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear them, upon them that hope in His mercy to deliver their soul from death. Where does our help arise? You don't see... Joshua, when he needed the extra day, daylight hours in the book of Joshua to keep fighting the battle, looking and saying, "Boy, I, I, I you know, if I, I'm gonna have to have to reach up there and grab a hold of that sun myself, that's, that's, that's an insane and stupid thought." No, he went down on his knee and he prayed to God, and said, "I need you to hold time for me so that I can finish whopping these people for you." And throughout the scripture, we can find uh, one of my favorite passages of scripture is when Elisha is being approached by that militia, and he has his servant there with him, and his servant's like, "We're fixing to get mollyhocked over here. We're fixing to get murdered by these guys." And he asked the Lord to show him, and the hills and the valleys were full of the Lord's host all around him. That is the power of our God. And, and I'm sure that was just a way. Yeah, go help Elijah out. A wave of his hand. And a way thousands of chariots went to defend them. And we're worried about bills and worried about work and worried about illness and sickness when at a wave of, at a whim, at a notion, our Lord can create a mighty deliverance. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, for He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted His holy name. It's very interesting that as we keep running through the book of Psalms, we keep coming back to this patience. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. Help will arrive on God's good time. If you don't believe that, read the New Testament, read about the death of Lazarus. By all intents and purposes, by all accounting, Jesus was late to offer aid in that situation. Dead is dead. For our heart shall rejoice in Him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Trust will offer praise. Our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in thy holy name. We can be happy because we know when we lay things out and we lay our head on our pillow at night that God has got everything under his control. And if this stuff gets destroyed, there is a better home awaiting than what we have here. I went to the sanctuary right before we practiced, and I told Mom my back was hurting. I run a lively lad earlier in the week, and I still haven't got over that. Um, <laughs> probably need to run it a little bit more often. It helped my, helped my strength in my back muscles. Um, but uh, the all those aches and pains, and I can... Work, right now, I work my shoulder and it clicks and pops and all this stuff. Degenerating joints and 
heart problems like uh, uh, Dennis's heart surgery and all this other stuff, all that begins to, uh, it, it fades to the background. We, when we know in where, in whom we trust. We can, we, can, we can lay down of night and if I slip off and I stroke out here in this bed or if I'm on the way to work in the morning and somebody comes out of Joyner Hollow Road and just T-bones me out into eternity, well, I hope somebody can get the pickup truck because I'm on to a better place. Thy mercy, O Lord, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Another reciprocal relationship. Let your mercy be on us in direct proportion to the faith or the hope that we have in you. You want to be in God's good graces? Well, you're going to have to get in God's good graces. That's what that means. It, 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 you, the more you hope, the better mercy you have. That was the prayer, was it not? Any questions or comments on Psalm 33 before we dismiss? Good deal. We will talk to you next week. You are dismissed. Have a great one.